We're here in the test kitchen this morning welcoming Grace Young, the stir fry guru. And I'm here with Lon Lom and I'm Lisa McManus. And we're going to do a comparison of cooking in a wok versus a nonstick 12 inch skillet. So we're going to start with beef and broccoli. This is a recipe from one of Grace's cookbooks. It's called Stir Frying to the Sky's Edge. So um, the ingredients for this recipe are super simple. I'm starting with flank steak, and this has been cut into one quarter inch bite-sized pieces. The beef is always cut against the grain and that prevents it from being chewy and tough. And that's a really critical uh, step when you're preparing your ingredients. And everything should be uniform size as much as possible to make sure that everything cooks up evenly. So the first thing I'm adding is minced ginger. And this, what we're doing is we're marinating the beef. Um, with American marinades, you're always completely um, making the marinade first and then putting it over the beef. But with Chinese marinades, you can just add the ingredients right before you cook. This is a mixture of cornstarch and salt and pepper, and you just sprinkle it in. And then just stir the mixture. So there's no need to make the marinade or to marinate the beef overnight or even several hours ahead of time. It's right before you're making your stir fry. So you want to stir this until the cornstarch is no longer visible. And the ginger has an important role. Not only is it flavoring the beef, but it has a digestive enzyme, so it's tenderizing the beef too. And the last thing I'm adding is a teaspoon of Asian sesame oil. And the oil infuses the beef with flavor. It also adds fat, so it's tenderizing the beef. And lastly, it's coating the beef, which means that it will be easier to stir fry and there won't be any sticking or minimal sticking. And that's it. You don't have to do this 10 or 15 minutes ahead of time. It's right before you stir fry. And then here I have minced garlic, and this is fermented black beans. They've been rinsed and mashed. So with stir fries, the traditional Chinese way is always to preheat the wok, and every stove has a different power. Some people put their hand about two inches above the fire, and it should feel like a hot radiator, but that's a very hard thing to judge. So what I do is I flick a drop of water and when the water drop evaporates within one to two seconds, then it's ready. And do you see the smoke that's appearing right now? If you're new to stir frying, I say turn off the heat because it's a little safer. And then we're gonna swirl in one tablespoon of a high smoking point oil. I like to use peanut, but some people are allergic to peanut oil, so now I'm turning the heat back on. Other high smoking point oils are grapeseed, rice bran oil, avocado. So now I'm adding this mixture of garlic and fermented black beans, and you're hearing a very faint sizzle. It doesn't have to be loud, but if the wok wasn't correctly preheated, there would be no sizzle sound at all. Push the mixture to the side of the wok, and now I'm going to add all of the beef. So now you're hearing the sizzle sound. So what I like to do is spread the beef until every piece of beef is touching the hot surface of the wok. So this is something that nobody would do in China. In China, you would immediately start stir frying but an American stove isn't as hot as a Chinese stove. So what we're doing is we're actually giving the, the beef a chance to sear for a second. And you just want to stir fry enough so that the outside of the beef is just beginning to brown, but it's not cooked through. And now I need that bowl. Yep. And now I'm just swirling in the last tablespoon of oil. I had said before it needs to be a high smoking point oil. If you were using a low smoking point oil like extra virgin olive oil or Asian sesame oil, the oil would smoke, which means you're actually breaking down the structure of the oil. 
So you're just stir frying the onions until they're softened a little bit. Then we're adding the broccoli and this broccoli has been blanched. So it doesn't really require much cooking. We're just really reheating the broccoli. And finally, this is the mixture of chicken broth, the dark soy sauce, rice wine, and I always swirl it down the sides of the pan. If you add it to the center of the pan, it takes down the temperature of the wok. And now the beef. And there you have it. Yep. That looks beautiful. Yep. Um, so I'm going to start preheating my pan. It's not going to go as fast. So um, because we're in nonstick um, and because it's test kitchen protocol, we always heat our pans with something in there so that you don't accidentally overheat the pan. The oil will start smoking, uh, which is how I know that the pan is hot enough uh, and I can start. Right. Can I show off in the meanwhile that oh, there's absolutely. No, no sticking in my wok? So this is why I call it ancient nonstick cookware. Yeah. <laughs> So in the same way that you let this kind of hang out first, right. we often don't actually stir when we stir fry. We'll let food sit for about a minute, give it a quick toss, right. spread it back out and let it go again. And um, we've found that it, uh, it just works so much better on yeah. these burners. Ready to get out of the pan? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. No, you're not looking for much color, right? No, no color at all. It's just to get fragrant. Mm -hmm. So, and then to the side and I add the onions? Exactly. Um, I noticed you didn't try to get color on the onions. Not at all. You could probably add the broccoli now too. So I think here is where you see the advantage of the wok because you have almost no room to maneuver your ingredients. Yeah. Whereas the wok, I think the difference in volume is this is probably five quarts. Mm -hmm. I know this is five quarts, and I think a 12 inch skillet is probably maybe three quarts at most. Yeah. yeah. But you have to be very careful, and you can't yep. do a vigorous uh, stir fry motion. But Lon is very careful, there's nothing that's. <laughs> That's coming out onto the stove. <laughs> so it's possible, but it seems like more work to do a lot in the more work. Because yeah, you're trying maybe. really hard not to dump right. everything out. Got a out. couple years of practice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's okay. Here we go. So I would say they're pretty close. I think yeah. it was more about ease of use than about right. outcome. Right. So we definitely can achieve it in the nonstick skillet, but between the concerns about high heat and the lack of space to really move the ingredients around, the wok wins. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and also the one thing you need to point out is that your sides of your wok are a cooking surface, whereas the sides of a skillet are not. You only have the flat cooking surface. Exactly. And in fact, when we test skillets, one of the issues we find often is that the sides slope in and your actual flat cooking surface is pretty small. That's our winning nonstick and it has a pretty maximal exactly. amount of cooking surface for the size of the pan, but that's unusual. Well, thank you so much. Showing us the difference between the wok and the skillet, it, the wok wins. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and the champion is... Grace. Thank you so much for coming to the Test Kitchen today and doing this with us. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. It's been my pleasure.